Sometimes I must reluctantly admit that as a Sega kid, I definitely missed out on some nifty games on the NES, SNES, and Nintendo 64. Mind you, I'd never go back and change what I grew up with, of course, but there's definitely a lot of FOMO that I feel when I look back on the years behind me. Shit, there's tons of major franchises that I've simply never paid any mind to, even in the past few console gens. Among the more major skips like Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, basically every Legend of Zelda title, and hundreds of others comes today's humble little title, ActRaiser. Why this one, out of all the possible FOMO titles I just listed? I don't know. It's just the one I wanted to play for whatever reason. Plus, I remember ActRaiser looked kinda cool from its few appearances on the children's game show Nick Arcade. This is challenge on ActRaiser, and today it is set at 1,500 points. Go! All right. All right, he's up. Good. Yo, this kid sucks at ActRaiser. I could get 1,530 seconds easy. Check this shit out. ActRaiser is a half-platformer, half-god simulator that was dropped onto the SNES across the entire globe over the course of about three years or so. ActRaiser was developed by Quintet and published by Enix. Hey, I finally found a game from the ever-elusive other half of the Square Enix company. In ActRaiser, you play as God. Well, in the Japanese version, you do. Not in North America. You see, back in the 90s, Nintendo actually had a pretty strict policy in regards to any content that may be construed as offensive, which basically knocked out any sort of religious content any game might have had, so ActRaiser was of course course, affected. As mentioned, you're a god in the Japanese version, and your antagonist is Satan. There were also some monster layers that were represented by the Star of David that were changed to something a little less religious. The pyramid in Cassandora also had the Eye of Providence on its tip removed as well. Just to list a few examples, of course. In North America, you instead are called the Master. Wait, the Master? No! Your antagonist is renamed to Tanzra as well. Beyond that, the North American version is also way easier than the Japanese one too. Way more enemies to deal with than JP one for sure. But let's reel back to the story for now. Generations ago, the Demon Lord Tanzra ride his six demon lieutenants and kicked your ass so hard you had to retreat to the Sky Palace to rest and heal. In your absence, Tanzra has basically run roughshod over the lands, populating with monsters of all kinds, crushing all of human civilization, and sending humanity scattering into the darkness and vying for their very survival. The game begins with you finally waking up from your long slumber. You're weak as a kitten because nobody has faith in you anymore since they've been getting wholesale slaughtered by hordes of monsters that have been unleashed upon them. Knowing your people are in danger now though, you crack your knuckles and get some honest to god... godding. You roll your sky palace over the lands of Fillmore, take possession of a statue of a warrior, and promptly begin culling the demon filth from your lands. This is the first of two gameplay types that ActRaiser has to offer. Platformer. Your little animated warrior has a sword to attack with, with standing, crouching, and jumping slashes to use. Occasionally, you also pick up a power-up, which gives you a sort of nice little range slash to attack with, too. You could jump as well. That's pretty cool. You also have access to some magical attacks, too. They have limited casts, of course, but goddamn, they are insanely strong. Stardust and Magical Aura in particular seem insanely broken. You can nuke bosses in, like, two casts very easily with either of these bad boys. All these attacks will be used to do battle with all manner of vile creatures that have overtaken the world in your absence. Horrible creatures, like goblins, floating eyeballs, giant grubs, apes that look like the fuzzballs from critters, and, worst of all, the most evil and abominable creature in the demon army. Bees. Actually, there's just a lot of normal animals trying to jack you up here in this game. Hell, some are even working together now. Or maybe this bird just dropped its lunch on accident, and it decided to attack me in its fury. Anyway, after hacking your way through a legion of demons, you run across the first boss of the game, a centaur knight. Slash him to death, and Act 1 of Fillmore will be concluded. Afterwards, you're quickly whisked away to the other half of ActRaiser's gameplay, the civilization builder and god simulation. You're given a shrine as the center of your new village, and two believers to get everything started. You'll give your people a bit 
of guidance, help, and they'll be on their way to crafting a new civilization. And you'll want to have them build and expand as much as possible since your level raises every time you press the population cap to a certain point. Leveling up gives you more SP to spend on miracles, as well as giving your warrior on the ground a bit more HP in the platforming segments. On the overmap, you'll have control of this little cherub, who you'll use to fend off monsters while your people build their homes. You'll also have access to a bevy of miracles. You'll use lightning to clear trees and rocks, rain to regrow the people's crops and dry up inhospitable deserts. You'll be able to blast swampy areas with the sun and use the wind to power your people's windmills. And lastly, you have the earthquake miracle, which completely destroys your entire civilization and can geomorph certain maps as well. Oh, how wonderful! The two islands are connected! Too bad everyone is dead. As for the monsters mentioned a few sentences back, you'll have bats which try to carry off four people at once, holy hell. Blue eyes white dragons which burn down your people's houses, red devils who specifically attack your people's crops instead of anything else. Which honestly I think is a bit more fucked up than just trying to kill my humans. Trying to force a famine that will cause mass starvation and death. That's messed up, Monster Man. And lastly, there are these big skulls, which, if left to their own devices, will cause an earthquake that destroys all of your villagers' abode. Uh, pardon you, buddy. That's my job, not yours. These monsters constantly spawn from various little lairs on the map. You need to kill the ones that are menacing your people and guide your villagers to the summoning circle so they can close it for you. I find it kind of odd my people can close these circles, but can't actually harm the monsters attacking them. They can learn devastating ritual magics, but no one knows how to shoot a bow or build a ballista tower or something. Regardless, if you take a loss in the blue eyes, don't take it too hard. Your people are incredibly tenacious and industrious. A blue eyes could burn on a house, killing everyone inside. One of your other new people will just be like, It's free real estate and just build on top of the ashes of the last charred bodies. How did my people lose the war to this demon army exactly? This is a level of tenacity on par with the Romans. These humans are badass, man. Your towns will grow and your people will develop various technologies, and will also communicate with you pretty regularly whenever a problem they themselves can't solve pops up. Something like a plague, or a dumbass child getting lost in the wilderness. They'll also offer you any significant relics they find too, which is typically stuff that's used in certain quest lines, or just as commonly, more magical casts for your warrior in the platforming segments. Regardless, in Fillmore, after you fulfill a handful of requests for your people, one of Tanzra's demon lieutenants will rear their ugly heads and you'll thusly head into Act 2, also known as the second platforming segment of a given act. You're faced off against a leaping Minotaur, the first of Tanzra's demon lieutenants, and if you kill him, your people will no longer fear evil. Which, honestly, that is an amazing line. Let me praise the translations in this game real quick. I love how much this game strokes my ego. Save the game and quit. You've worked so hard today. Take a rest. You've earned it. Save the game and keep going. You're so diligent and hardworking. Continue if you must. Yeah, I am a great, smart, all-powerful, big-dicked, and amazing deity for sure. Praise me more, Actraiser. Please do. You kill the Minotaur and finish the first area. And yeah, that's basically how the rhythm of the game goes from then on out. You head to Bloodpool, not sure how it got that name, kill a sphinx and keep the village elder's dumbass kid out of trouble, and then you fight a werewolf wizard. You head to the desert area of Casandoro and destroy all the sand there because it's coarse, rough, and irritating and it just gets everywhere for your villagers before you head to a mysterious pyramid and slay a tomb king head within. Then to Aitos, which has this really lame looking firewheel demon as the final boss. I only bring it up because the first boss is a pretty cool serpent. I'd rather this guy be my lieutenant if I I was the demon lord. Onward to the swampy islands of Maranha, which I have to now point out the sole thing that kind of annoyed me in this game. Even after multiple levels, your little cherub will say, Oh master, it's unconventional, but our people in this town wish to speak with you. My little guy, it's not unconventional. My people have been begging me for assistance for like years now, and I'm always here to listen, of course. Maranha features a massive plant wall to kill, and the lieutenant in this area is this funky snake deity. You'll then fly to the snow blasted peaks of Northwall, where you'll give the people their fleece jammies so they can survive the arctic temperatures. On top of, you know, melting all the snow. Northwall sets you against what's called an incubus, which... I think you need a lower half to technically qualify as an incubus, but all right then. Then you face off with a pretty sweet looking ice dragon as the final boss. Since I've kind of blasted through the levels really quickly, I'll take a second to talk about them. Praise to the sheer amount of diversity here. You have simple, nice looking wood areas and castles too, but you also get stuff like these really dense swamps, volcanic caverns, and they're polar opposite in ice crown caverns. The most interesting map though is what I think is a living tree you have to ascend. It's Northwall's Act 2 map, and it's pretty cool, I can't lie. 
I'll take a second to compliment the soundtrack here, too. It's composed by the legendary Yuzo Koshiro of Streets of Rage 1 and 2 fame, and it rocks, of course. Gameplay-wise, everything is exceptionally smooth and responsive. The only time I ever died due to the platforming was because of my own incompetence, and that's it. After you slay the last demon lieutenant here, the island of Deathheim rises from the oceans, and you now have your final level. Unlike the other areas, Deathheim has no civilization building segment. You're immediately transported to the lair of Tanzra and his six lieutenants, and then promptly dropped into the fight with the first boss. The final segment of Act Razor is a boss rush. You have three lives and however many magic casts you've accrued over the course of the game to defeat the six lieutenants and Tanzra himself. Which sounds really daunting, I know, but honestly, it was very doable. I did it. Took me a few tries, but I did it. Which, as an aside, the penalty for dying in this game basically doesn't exist. The game's pretty generous with level checkpoints as well, and if you end up losing, well, just kick back to the Sky Palace and told to give it another try whenever you summon the strength again. You get to Tanzra and kill him once, then you kill him again, and peace finally returns to the lands below. Thanks to your great deeds as the one true god in this world. That's right, all you Satanists. Remember that I am the one true god. Greek gods, wrong. Egyptian gods, wrong. Hinduism, wrong. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, peasants. But anyway, your cherub sums up all your great deeds across the lands, and the two of you decide to visit one of your temples one last time, only to find that it's empty. As it turns out, the people of the world have no need for faith anymore and quickly forgot about you. Guys, it's been like 10 minutes since I killed the demon lord, you fucking ungrateful pricks. I cleared whole forests, dried up deserts and swamps, and melted whole snowdrifts for you assholes. And you just wash your hands of me like that? Throw an orgy or some gladiatorial games to honor me every once in a while at least. The in-game master is a lot less indignant than I, though, and simply decides to leave the planet and return to Earth once again when he's needed. Which is about three years from now, because that's when ActRaiser 2 came out. But yeah, that's, that's ActRaiser. Honestly, pretty much nothing but good things to say about it. Plays exceptionally well, has interesting enemy designs, and two very distinct but fun game modes to play with. On top of an absolutely fantastic soundtrack by the legendary Yuzo Koshiro. A very good and solid all-around title, worth giving a shot today even. As mentioned, ActRaiser did receive one sequel in ActRaiser 2, and it even got an entire remake a couple years back in ActRaiser Renaissance. I try to finish every series on this channel, so someday I will maybe get to those too. But until then, always faithful warriors of the city-state, I must sign off. As always, my name is Hades Manta and I thank you very, very much for watching. Feel free to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe because as always, there's more content to come and I'll see y'all in the next one. Goodbye.